Ahoy, and welcome aboard our brutally honest and mildly humorous review of two of the most popular accommodation types on a Virgin Voyages ship, and also the most opulent and expensive of them all, the Massive Suite. We've stayed in both the Sea Terrace and the Seriously Suite, and we spent a few hours in the Massive Suite, Richard Branson's very own home aboard Scarlet Lady. What did we think, and would you agree with us? Here, laid before you, is everything you need to know, with a few things you didn't need to know. Let's do this. There has been a lot said and written about the sea terrace. Insults have been thrown, scolding hot scorn has been poured, and one critical reviewer sneered so hard their face cramped and they needed medical attention. Cries of IKEA echoed round the blogosphere in a stormy swell of judgmental disapproval, like it was a bad thing, broadly forgetting that millions of people, and probably those saying it, regularly shopped there. We found the room to be reassuringly solid and this little vanity table, being the offending white glossy material, was actually big enough for most of our stuff. There was the smallest shelf in the world above some handy sockets that was all but useless save for keeping the room's tablet device, not an iPad, off the more usable surfaces. The rest of this unit was usable, if not a little cluttered with stuff Virgin expects you to use or buy. The water is definitely welcome, as is the empty fridge, but there are a couple of things that raised an eyebrow, and for some, the blood pressure. Analyzing these intriguing little packages, we discovered a $30 sail into sleep kit, a sturdy linen bag containing multi-sensory therapeutics, whatever that means. For me, it means a couple of vodka martinis and a pillow chocolate, which comes in at around the same cost. The contents of the second package, however, are not freely available at the bars around the ship, nor left on your pillow nightly. This time to play kit is for when you're ready to go below deck, but I swear it's forbidden to enter the staff quarters, so I'm getting mixed messages here. There's some jelly in there in case you get the midnight munchies, a band-aid, I think it said that, for any little accidents, a party hat, I guess to wear on Scarlet Night, and a spare zip in case you suffer a trouser mishap. <laughs> All very decent practical stuff. Thanks, Virgin Voyagers. We found the inclusion of a lone chair a bit puzzling. Even a wider love seat that squeezed in two people would have been more welcome, but I suppose that's not needed if you choose to convert the bed into a sofa during the day. Something we didn't do to save our poor room steward additional work. So we didn't film it. Sorry, not sorry. There's plenty of space behind this curtain to hide your stuff, or someone that shouldn't be in your room, saucy 70s sitcom style. And there's lots of little fun and practical touches. We love this cute little octopus, which was the ship's spirit animal, because it is strong and flexible. The little one here had no purpose whatsoever, but I wish I'd have bought one now. The tray on which it sat, on closer inspection, revealed a playful design detail most of us won't notice. Yes, the bathroom is small, but aren't they all? And at least the glass shower door opened inwards and outwards, and the shower was plenty powerful enough to wash off all those multi-sensory therapeutics. I mean, you don't want to be multi-sensory all day, do you? Mm, that could be awkward. The balcony outside, which I guess is the actual sea terrace, has a hammock that will draw you in and never release you from its comfy grip. I only wish there were two here. Well, we like this room a lot. Oh, and I forgot to mention the mood lighting, which lends itself perfectly to the glossy whiteness of the room and we wish they'd have extended it to the bathroom too. Even in broad daylight, you can go for that boudoir look and crack open that fancy little box any time of the day. It's still $30 though, so curb your enthusiasm, feisty sailors. Overall, we liked it more than we thought, and we think you would too. The interiors may remind you visually of Ikea, but they have the feel and build quality of John Lewis, so there. Sp 
spend a little more sailor loot and you can upgrade to the entry level suite and become a rock star. We stayed in this seriously suite for four nights and I've got to say, although we liked the sea terrace, we loved this entry level suite. Virgin Voyagers might call you a rock star, but in reality, you're more akin to a support act to a full blown stadium artist. You do get these cool bathrobes to wear though. Rock and roll. For us, the bathroom was the highlight of this category. It's absolutely gorgeous, with floor to ceiling marble and the most spacious walk in shower that's almost as big as the one in the massive suite. More on that later, so stay tuned. The cheeky window into the room adds to the saucy fun, and the rainbow semi reflective glass gives you just that amount of visibility from the bedroom to arouse a little bit of interest from whomever is casually minding their own business in the bedroom area. It's great to look into the room when showering too, so all in all, if you're not embarrassed to show a bit of rock star body to your roommate, it's quirky fun, <laughs> if a tad distracting. If you can drag yourself away from the bathroom, the main bedroom area is equally as fabulous. It's spacious, the bed faces the sea, and there's enough storage for all your stuff, although not an awful lot more than the sea terrace. There's lots of little details too, most of which have a price tag, so don't slip them in your suitcase because they will ring them through the till. The much celebrated turntable is a bit of a gimmick and in our opinion a waste of valuable desktop space. You're given two random albums to play, we had Michael Jackson's Bad and an ABBA album which had been remastered in 45 RPM and unfortunately the turntable was fixed at 33.3 RPM, so ABBA sounded like a Welsh male choir. Fascinating. If you get fed up with Welsh choirs singing Waterloo or Michael Jackson continually making <laughs> noises, you can of course buy more vinyl from Virgin Voyages' very own record shop on board. There's no nickel and diming for sure, but open bracket, everything has a price tag. Close brackets. The drawers with glasses and cocktail making equipment have that initial wow factor, but quickly reveal a few problems. Firstly, there's no proper wine glasses, so if you choose a wine package like we did, you'll have to request some, or drink wine from either a cocktail glass or a whiskey tumbler. Mm. Also, the cocktail making kit is impressive, but even if you choose the liquor package, you'll still be without most of the ingredients to actually make yourself a cocktail. So unfortunately, this drawer is next to useless. Speaking of impracticality, like the Sea Terrace, Virgin only give you a single chair in a seriously suite. What is it with their obsession with sitting on someone's lap all the time? Oh yeah, actually, that makes total virgin sense. We had to bring in a balcony chair, of which there are two, ironically, and the balcony table to make this space a bit more practical. Besides, the novelty got very old very quickly of me sitting on Helen's lap. You do get a nice blanket though, which Virgin Voyages have made perfectly clear have been freshly laundered. Thanks very much for letting me know. I don't have to worry now about having one caked in another sailor's hair or dead skin cells. <laughs> Phew. Having said all that, at night this suite comes into its own and the mood lighting in here is nothing short of fabulous. Here's cinema mode in action and you can tilt the screen to face the bed. And we mentioned mood lighting earlier in the sea terrace, but for completeness we thought we'd show you all the options from our seriously suite. So here they are. In summary, we absolutely loved the Sirius Suite and for us is the pick of the whole ship in terms of balance of space, design, practicality, comfort and value. If you're Richard Branson, a lottery winner, or got into crypto early enough, 
you can blow a suitcase full of laundered cash on this, the biggest, brashest and most bodacious dude stroke babe cave of the whole ship. The rather modestly titled Massive Suite. More funky than James Brown's pants, I'm going to let you have a quick look around yourself. In question, what's God's favourite chord? Jesus. Hmm, I'll get my coat. But I can't think of a beat combo that has four guitarists right now. Do you know of any? Please list them in the comments. Maybe if Radiohead shared the suite with Ed Sheeran. Or Iron Maiden bunked down with Susanna Hoffs. Hmm, I know I would. These guitars are at least proper branded gear, not some cheap knockoffs. But honestly, they'll probably only be used for a bunch of drunken Instagram poses that didn't know their Gibsons from their Epiphones, rather than some proper musos getting down to some serious creative jam sesh. Oh well. Into the bathroom now, and the position of the bath is more than a bit jarring. Why doesn't it sit by a window? A viewpoint, or at least a TV? It's been plonked in a marble corridor like a last minute thought. Shoot, we forgot to put a bath somewhere. Hardly a location you'd like to wallow in, to be honest. The shower is big enough for a private party Mr Branson is hoping you will enjoy here. But the peep show window isn't situated over the bed like the Seriously Suite, but over a bench seat, reminiscent of ones you find in a walk-in barbershop. I prefer the Seriously Suite bed position, facing the sea like all proper suite beds should. Unfortunately, for all its pomp and grandeur, I don't think this suite was very well laid out at all. Virgin Voyagers could have done much better, especially when you'd need the royalty income of you two to afford one. Outside, it almost redeems itself, and this is where I think Virgin will hope you'll spend most of your time. The terrace has got to be the biggest cruise ship balcony in the world. They could film a whole season of Love Island out here. Well, actually, Virgin Voyagers would love that, wouldn't they? There's even two hammocks, so you can see this suite is the most expensive hammock upgrade on the high seas. With all these nice outdoor toys to play in, the hot tub is so inviting, the table that's designed to be danced on, not so inviting. I was disappointed to discover that large parts of this terrace are overlooked by Richard's rooftop, which sits above the massive suites. I'm not confident in prancing around in my speedos in the most private of places, and I'd be even less inclined here. I guess you'd be gawked at a lot too, as the lesser rock stars attempt to establish whether you're a real celebrity, a Russian oligarch, or just a plain old YouTuber. Overall, we found the interior to be oddly laid out, trying to be too cool at the expense of practicality or comfort. And the outside would have been a perfect 10 if not for the potential privacy issues in certain areas of the terrace. So there you have it, a quick and brutally honest guide to the most popular and the most spectacular accommodation categories on Scarlet Lady Valiant Lady and Resilient Lady. If you like this, please give us a thumbs up, let us know in the comments which one you'd prefer to stay in, and consider watching these next in our Virgin Voyages series. Uh, thank you and see you again.